Hey, this is Dave Pryor for Leading Agile Sound Notes. We are doing podcasts, video podcasts all week long and streaming a lot of the interviews that we do with thought leaders and speakers and folks that are running the conference. It's the end of day two, so we've done a lot of great stuff so far. I think 15, this is the 15th interview we've done since we've been here. So right now, Kim Brainerd and Jesse Fuel are here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having us. And That's we're going to awesome. talk about PMOs. So you had a talk, this, a session this morning, solving the PMO paradox. That's correct. What is the paradox? Well, the paradox is that uh, a lot of times when you're on an agile transition or an agile journey, there's already an organization in place that's intended to support delivery, and that tends to be a PMO. Okay. And many times uh, there's a tension there about, well, what do you do? Um, are they in the way? Are they an asset that can be leveraged? Uh, you know what? We're agile. You're not. How about we just fire them? They're a dead man walking. Well, that's right. You know. Um, <laughs> So we decided that it would be uh, a constructive dialogue to actually just ask, hey, um, how have you guys approached this problem? Okay. And have you tried anything, or do you, can you think of anything other than just getting all those people fired that might be constructive, that might be where you might have some kind of a force multiplier where we can move forward in a collaborative fashion? Okay, and so how did the session work? What did you guys do in your room? I thought it was great. Um, it was interesting because everyone came in and we had flip chart paper on the tables. Okay. So there was two flip chart papers. We had a table that was expecting us, uh, excuse me, an audience that's expecting us to provide the content. Okay. But what people really forget is that the true value comes from those interactions, those collaborations. Okay. And we kicked it right off by explaining that, you know, here's the expectations. It's you as the individuals that are, are sharing those experiences. Okay. It's you as those individuals that are able to identify what issues you're having with the PMO, what issues you're having with those Agilists. Okay. And so we proposed three questions. Which were? And then we began to set the stage. What were the, you can't just leave that hanging. <laughs> it's the end of the day, everyone's a little fried, but let's go. What are the questions? All right, so first question. What are the afflictions that you've run into? What are the, what's the tension? And okay. we kicked it off with a bit of a skit where I was, I was the project manager guy and I had a kick, she literally put a kick me sign on my back and I had my charts, ah, I don't know what to do, I agile. Right. And I was the agile coach and, <laughs> and I, I see this guy coming in, he's holding everything and he's flustered and you know, he's got his schedules and his metrics and his plans and I'm like, hold on, hold on. Yeah. I'm your Agile coach. We just make magical I'm here stuff, man. It's awesome. To bring you don't measure the magic anything. For your journey. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so the first question really was about that tension. Okay. Um, what does it look like in your organization? And what are, in particular, what are some of the things that you've heard people say about each other? Like, those people just don't get it. Or okay. those people are for my job. Or it's those people, those control. people. Okay. And she mentioned the flip charts. So as they're having the conversation, World Cafe format is right. what we used where you're encouraged to write things down on the paper on the table. Right, and then rotate. And then rotate. Okay. Yeah. So the conversations began, and it, the idea was that half the table was a PMO. So okay. we were potentially taking on roles that we're not used to. So it's really a mindset, shifting your mindset, getting into some the other role. Having empathy for the other part. Yep, okay. starting with the empathy. And so we, we had challenges that were kicked off right away. Did so, you guys have all PMO people or was it a mix of Agile people and PMO? Well, so that was, that was this is an Agile conference. Yeah. And there is a lot of Agile people. So that's why she was saying that we were gonna have them role play. Half the table okay. would role play a PMO person, half the other table would role play an Agile person. And we would say, what are the kinds of things that you guys say about each other or that you would think would be said about each other? At one point, we did ask for a show of hands. How many people in the room are certified PMP project managers? And it was like 40%. I was going to say, wow. I'd say at least 40%. I was quite surprised. Yeah, and, okay. and so now that we've identified issues that we're having with one another, right. what can we give back to one another? So That's again, question two. Question yes. two okay. comes up, we have them actually get up and rotate okay. and form new groups. And so it was great, someone even came up to me at the end and they said, I love that. I love cool. actually getting up because as I was moving, I was digesting the information that I, mm. I we wrote down at the table. Okay. We moved and I was still thinking about it and he said, I think that really helped me That's great. remember. Cool. So some of the assets that people came up with is, it's, well, you know, 
project managers, they're generally trained in organizational design and change, organizational change management. They, they probably have been through Lean Six Sigma and have some exposure to lean concepts. Right. So that's an asset to where we can begin having a conversation on common ground. Meanwhile, agile people, um, they may have been trained on how to find dependencies across multiple uh, teams inside a release train. Sure. And guess what? That's critical path method. And so okay. uh, there's an asset that you, and not only in what you can bring to each other, but also in finding common ground. Okay, cool. And the third question? How can we move forward? All right. How can we come to some commonalities that we can work together? Because the idea take is- action. Okay. Let's take action. And it, it's really about together as Agilists and from a PMO perspective, it's we, the individuals, that have to communicate. Okay. Come up with these action plans so that we can share those okay. and move forward. So are you guys going to share the results with folks, or are you going to just pour yes. yourselves and not let anyone know? <laughs> well, what we did is, because, <laughs> because we were doing that uh, Sharpies on paper thing, yeah. uh, we actually took all the paper and are taking snapshots, and we're going to start posting them on the conference Twitter stream okay. and, and share out what people were, were brainstorming and coming up with. So That's cool. It's, uh, there was one guy who said, oh, I'm not going to be able to make your session. Can you tell me if the slides are going to be up? And I had to tell him, sorry, dude, no There's slides. No slides. The content it's, really comes from those yeah. people okay. and the conversations. And the hashtag is hashtag PMO Paradox. Okay. So this if you want to grab that content, we'll have we'll, it right there. All right. We'll put uh, links to it in the show notes when you guys post yeah. it. I want to ask you both another question about PMOs. Mm. Um, an organization like you described a few minutes ago that is transforming has a PMO in place, but they're going to switch to Agile. What I have seen a lot of is we're coaching teams, we're coaching senior leadership, and that poor PMO, the dead man walking, is stuck in the middle, not getting what it needs to, what it thinks it needs to feed upstairs, yeah. and feeling all this pressure to provide things they can't deliver anymore because they don't really understand what's happening. And I. I've thought of the PMO become sort of like a shock absorber, like it's just taking all the stress in. What have you guys seen that works to fix that? Yeah, I remember one time you called, you told me that you called it the adapter layer. Uh, that, okay. That, 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 that there's a, a translator layer that, uh, yeah. that can bridge between agile teams, leave them alone, and you know, you, it so could what, be. Yeah, it that's, could one, be. that's one yeah. pattern. Um, what have you seen? So from a government perspective, I actually share, this is actually how we began having conversations. We met over a PMO conversation. Okay. And I was sharing an experience I had with the government. And it was, again, it goes back to simplifying this. It's that we okay. have a PMO in place, especially in, in a government setting. Yeah. And they're not going away. Okay. They, they are, those roles are there. You should, and you should explain why for the folks that don't. So in, in the government, you have certain uh, GS positions. And the, there's GS positions that have governance over the, the framework. So there's okay. governance regarding budget. There's governance in regards to engineering. And so you have a PMO that is in place. They are there. They, they're actually mandated to have schedules. They're mandated to receive uh, certain metrics. And when it, it all boils down to budget. Okay. And so there's a PMO, and then they're also told to say, Let's, we're going to also go Agile. Okay. So how did you approach that in, the, in your experience? And what I did is I began to have these conversations, and I, we actually applied these three questions, which okay. were... What are the irritants? What can you do? What can we do for right. you? What, what can we do for each other? Okay. And it is sometimes the Agilist needing to let go, and it is also the PMO needing to let go. And where can we find that common gr ground to take action? Yeah. So do you think that the, the nature of a PMO is going to transform into something that, that maybe is there to help take the output of the teams and find a way to make it digestible for leadership? Are they there to teach leadership how to work with agile teams? Are they there to do some other That's one pattern. center of excellence? Like what's the, what's That's the, one pattern. What's the new job of the PMO? The, um, uh, so over the last couple of years, PMO, uh, PMI has been hosting a series of workshops called Building the Hybrid PMO. Uh, I've heard so, of these yeah, workshops, so, Yes, Jesse. yes. Um, <laughs> Dave used to be a part of it. Uh, uh, Mark Price Perry and Andy Jordan are both project management authors. And, and, and what we're talking about in this workshop is not just Agile PMO. That's part of the conversation. Right. But what, what the three of us are all talking about, coming from three different uh, 
communities and three different perspectives is the business driven yeah. project management and that's, and that's support Mark, office. Mark Perry. That's, his, yeah, that's his thing, right? It's, uh, it was transformative for me to hear him explain that stuff. Yeah. And so that, t I think, is, um, is the common theme across several patterns. Is that you're, uh, and, th and the, that's some hard medicine for a lot of agile people too, because yeah. I've got my agile center of excellence, and we're going to roll out this methodology across all these teams, and we're going to have this, uh, we're going to have this uh, program council that's going to coach these people, and, and that's how we're doing agile. So help me God. Yeah. Right. And and you're like, well, hold on a second. What about fit for purpose? And what about variation across teams? And what right. about what about? And 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 at the end of the day, it's about being business driven. And, um, satisfying our and satisfying our customers. And the customer being senior leadership as well as the people on the teams. Like that was one of the things I found. Oh. So we're, PMO people tend to think they work for leadership, but they forget they also work for the people Absolutely. that support them through them. Yeah. It's, it's others in the organization. It's not just yeah. about the person purchasing that product. It's others outside of the PMO. Yeah. One pattern that's, uh, that, that's been both positive and negative, depending on the context, is that you have a PMO and an Agile Center of Excellence in the same organization, working directly side next to each other. Right. I've seen some places that just led to a ton of yeah, conflict. Can't we all just get along? <laughs> and then in other places, in other places I've seen where uh, they've drawn very clear lines and they're helping each other achieve their respective mandates. Yeah. So. Uh, multiple patterns, but a common theme of supporting the business. Okay, and you said something downstairs about them talking to one another. That's kind of an important thing as well. It absolutely is. It's it's amazing that when we begin to remove the tools, remove yeah. these perceived notions, and we begin to actually understand what one another would like to achieve, yeah. we're really on the same page. We just need to turn the page and both get on it. Yeah, so if you're working in a PMO and you're struggling with how to deal with Agile, go talk to the Agile people. <laughs> and if you're working in Agile and you can't deal with going, go talk to them, right? It's, it's, it's that, that simple. It's yeah. that easy. And one of the, how we closed today, it was literally just that. It was repeating what they said. Yeah. It's, we, they value those interactions. They value those conversations. And they continuously brought that up. Yeah, and the challenge you offered is, uh, do, you, uh, do you believe in collaboration even if it means collaborating with people that view you as the problem. Wow, that's pretty powerful. Yeah, cool. and that I think was uh, the key thing. Cool, all right, and so you're doing another talk. Yes. You're bringing Christmas to the conference. I'm bringing <laughs> the festivities to the conference. Dave, you know me. Yes, so tell them about your other project I and am. what you're doing. Um, I have a nonprofit and uh, that I'm extremely passionate about, and it's an agile company, and it's called Santa Pays It Forward. Okay. And what we do is we take care of the elderly. And sadly, um, there's so many organizations, whether they're uh, nonprofits or just government-run agencies, right. that have contacted me over the years, and they're unable to fulfill their needs. And unfortunately, there's just no flair. People aren't drawn to them. Right. And so what I've found is that Santa Pays It Forward truly has a marketing flair. And so the talk on Thursday will be about agile marketing. So okay. we're, we're going to find out. Agile marketing or, with Santa as the example. Naughty or nice, Santa's going to be spreading some agile marketing. And advice. there's going to be elves and a snow princess. And Jolly Saint Nick himself Ooh. is supposed to be stopping by. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. And I heard he's bringing the misses. That should be pretty awesome. Christmas in the middle of Orlando in the middle. It's August, right? Yeah, August. exactly. Okay. Yes, maybe they'll deal with the humidity a little bit. He's, he's one to check in, inspect, and see where he needs to he's adapt. He's been naughty. <laughs> or nice. It's been a long day. Um, so, all right. So, before we, before we go, can you guys each explain where you work and the work that you do? That was what? I said absolutely. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Wow. I'll make He's sure done. I'm following. Okay. He's done. Um, I am uh, an independent coach <laughs> I trainer. I turned out in the middle of the interview. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to be uh, uh, I'm going to be taking this whole PMO conversation um, on the road. And okay. there's um, a seminars world in Nashville and in Chicago, where the hybrid PMO is the workshop where we talk about exactly this topic. Okay. And if you wanted to get more information about it here at the conference, uh, the Project Management Institute has a booth here at the conference where they're promoting their upcoming Agile Practice Guide, which is a community-authored, methodology-agnostic uh, 
publication about Agile methods that's, um, that was a collaboration between PMI and the Agile Alliance. Yep. And it's coming out next month, and so we're promoting that. Uh, and there happen, there will be a chapter in there about the uh, reconciling Agile with PMO okay. as well. So cool. that's, what, uh, that's what I'm working on these days. And if they want to learn more about you, where do they go? They go to my website, jessefuel.com. Yes, all right. And? I um, am Kim Brainerd, and I work for RadTech. I'm a coach and trainer. I also do consulting with uh, agencies such as nonprofit, government, and other corporations. As I mentioned, my, my passion is also around giving back to community. And yeah. so I, I work with a lot of educators, administrators, and nonprofits that um, their passion is to give back. And so okay. it's interesting because all these huge federations have programs yeah. and they've, they've actually dissolved them. And so you have PMO folks who have been called a PMO and now they no longer are in that department. And okay. so they're spread throughout and still trying to find their way in agile organizations. Mm. And so that's one of the areas that we also assist in. Cool. All right, this was great. Thank yes. you both for being here, especially at the end of a long day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for having um, us. Oh, thanks for coming. Um, I hope it goes well on Thursday. Yes, thank you. And thank you for helping the poor PMO people. <laughs> hey. They're helping the poor actors. Don't give up too. if you work in the PMO. It will get better. That's right. We're all working together. Better. There's all there's hope effort. in there somewhere. Yeah. Put it in here, guys. Oh, wow. That's weird. That's totally cheesy. All right. <laughs> We're chenging out. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the day.